Hey, what's going on, phone dags? Bo HD here, and Android M was officially announced last week with a developer preview, which gives us insight into some of the new features and improvements found in the latest version of Android. I went ahead and flashed Android M on my Nexus 6, and so in this video, I just wanna go ahead and walk through around 20 new features and improvements and or design changes that are worth mentioning in my opinion. So first of all, on the lock screen, we now have a more bold font to display the time with a pencil thin font here to display the day of the week, as well as the day of the month. We also have access to Google Voice Search at the bottom here, which actually used to be for the dialer app. So now you can just swipe it open to access Voice Search where you can ask Google for just about anything. Just swipe it open here. What's the weather? It's 61 degrees and cloudy in Portland. On the opposite end, we now have the camera app icon shortcut, which we can open up to activate the camera, so that's not new at all. The only thing new about the camera app so far is the focus ring, which now pulses in and out rather than from side to side, like you're focusing on a traditional DSLR lens. Now it just pulses in and out like so. There's also one new wallpaper. So if we go into wallpapers, we will see that these are all stock. These were here before, but we have this new one here, which looks pretty good. It's like an aerial view of a beach and we have it uh, fades into blackness here where all the icons are, and it looks pretty good. The app drawer looks completely different though. It's a lot more ugly, but you know, it is more functional. At the top, you can search for a specific app, like YouTube, for example. You also have four of the most recent apps that you opened, and then at the bottom, you have a vertical scroll list of all the apps that you have in alphabetical order. So, you know, it's more functional, it's more organized, it just looks really bad in my opinion. In this preview, you cannot change the layout of this app drawer, although I'm pretty sure Google will give us the option in future builds. So, you know, if you're like me and you think this app drawer looks ugly, chances are you will be able to change it, but right now you can't. With Android M, we now have new volume controls. So we can now go home and completely silent our smartphone and only allow alarms, which I'm really glad they put this back. The priority notifications idea was pretty neat, but it's also kind of time consuming to set the priority of each app. So I'm really glad you can silence everything here, like the good old days. There is also a drop down bar, which allows you to change the music playback volume, as well as the alarm volume. And then you can end the do not disturb mode altogether by just pressing end now. If we go to the widgets section, we'll see that it's uh, now presented in a vertical format. So we can now swipe through all of our widgets vertically, which is different. It's no longer side to side for better or for worse. And uh, you know, if an, an app has multiple widgets, you can now slide through them like so. Google Now is also greatly improved. There's a new feature called Google Now on tap, which you can activate by long pressing the home button. So right now it doesn't work as you can see here, but uh, if I go to like a certain page with information and I long press the home button, Google Now will pop up and in future builds, it'll basically scan the page and give me relevant search results for the main subject that I'm viewing. It doesn't work in this build, unfortunately, but I'm really excited to test it out because it has a ton of potential and it's probably my favorite feature of Android M. In the quick settings, we now have a do not disturb option, which we can cycle through and toggle on or off. And if we open it up, we now have options to totally silence our phone, allow for the only the alarms, and then also allow for priority messages or notifications only. If you go to the more settings, you can actually customize the priority only notifications from the reminders, events, messages, calls, and even repeat callers. And if we go back, we can set the length of time. Let's see here. There we go. So we can uh, set this do not disturb time for two hours, three hours, all the way up to 12 hours, it looks like. And what's really neat is that actually, if we dive back into the more settings, you can go to the automatic rules and actually automate this process so if you have school on say Mondays and Wednesdays from nine to 11, you can manage all of this stuff and make sure that you don't receive any notifications when you're in class, for example. So I could really see myself using this for school, especially. If we jump into the settings, we now have a few new options and features and categories here. I wanna take a look at the apps section here, which if we go into it, we can select a certain app and actually manage the permissions and turn off certain permissions uh, so if we don't want Chrome, for example, to access the camera, we could just deny it access to the camera just like that, which is a new feature and is pretty darn impressive. This works for just about all areas of the device. It just depends on which app has access to certain functions 
So I could turn off the location, I could turn off the microphone. If I jump back to other apps, you'll probably see a different story like Drive. Let's go to Permissions, Contacts, I can turn off Contacts for this app, and so forth. There's also a new Memory app section, which we can activate by going to Advanced, Memory, and there we have it. We can now view how much memory each app is using, which is pretty neat. If we go back to Storage in the Settings, hit back a couple more times, there we have it. You can view your internal storage here, and if you have a micro SD card in your smartphone or your tablet, you'll also be able to view the storage of that SD card as well. There's also a new tap and pay section, which manages Android Pay and will allow you to input a credit card and pay for stuff using that card from your phone. So it's not quite active yet, so I can't really demonstrate any of the features, but when it does become up and running, I'll be sure to test it in detail. But in the future, this will probably be where you have all of your Android Pay settings. The battery section doesn't look any different though, so if we go to the battery section here, it's gonna look very similar to previous versions of Android. However, there is a built-in dose feature which uses the sensors in your phone or your tablet to determine when you're not using your device to help conserve battery power. You can't really see anything different here, but I will be sure to test the dose feature in detail over the course of the next few days and weeks, but I'm assuming standby time will in theory be greatly improved. Now the last thing that I want to mention is the Easter egg that we can find by going to the About section and tapping on Android version M, which pops up with a material design alphabetical letter M. Nothing happens when you tap on it, nothing happens, well actually, if you long press on it, you get this little shrug, this little emoticon here that shrugs. So the official name for the next version of Android isn't official yet, although recent reports indicate that it will be called Android Milkshake. So feel free to let me know what you think the M will stand for in a comment down below. With that said guys, that has been my walkthrough overview of the 20 plus features, improvements, and or design changes found in Android M. Let me know what you think is the best feature of Android M in a comment down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, maybe subscribe if you're brand new to PhoneDog. With that said, as always, I am BoHD from PhoneDog.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.